right, we finished changing out our reamer. Now this reamer was marked at uh, 0 0.6253. And uh, I think it's gonna be a good uh, fit for this. We went in and deburred our, our slug here for our pin that goes through. And uh, so it's ready to test fit. See, we can't, we can't get this in here yet. And uh, so let's get going, all right? Now, I, I'll mill and drill things dry all day long on the box tube here, but when it comes to sticking my reamer in the hole, I just have to get it wet first. It seems like if I don't, then it's gonna chafe or gall the edges. There we go, nice. Nice good fit there. All right, we're gonna continue uh, reaming the rest of these holes out. Same thing. All right. All right. <clears throat> we decided to take a break and just, uh, we got our countersink in here. Chamfer tool is what we're using it for. Drill press turns nice and slow. I'm just holding them up there and breaking those sharp edges. Okay, reason why we want to do that is because we're going to set this up and we're going to move one of the parallels and we need to pick out a hole here and we got to move the parallel so it's not under the same place we're drilling the hole. Okay, we came back to zero and we're still at the uh, inch and a quarter on the height. Now we want to move up to the next hole location which is actually just going to be the, the radius of the cutout for the top of the roller assembly so that there's clearance for shafting to go through the framework which is the part that we're working on right now the box tube is the framework that holds the pivots and the rollers and all of that um, that is one inch 776 on the height so we're going to go ahead and bring that up here one inch 776 do we say we'll double check on that yeah that looks like it all right um, and that is a 7 8 radius from that point right there all right and there's close to that radius right there and now this is a 3 quarter in, or a 5 8 radius right there we're already past the vice on with that so we need to be able to cut out here without cutting into our jaw so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and uh, we're going to have to take out our spring and now that we've deburred this thing we can actually have a parallel underneath the center in this area here at least back behind where we're going to mill and now we need to have something that will support on both sides where we're going to work and we'll still be able to locate this to our stop so our bottom and our stop is still set there we'll be able to hold that dimension there but we'll be able to have the clearance for our cutter to come in and out of the material without hitting the, the back jaw 
or the forward jaw. <laughs> I, I guess that's the back jaw, forward jaw. Four jaw. <laughs> Can't wait for the four jaw competition that is that stands. All right, we got uh, these are spatial blocks. I brought these all the way from California. One of the guys there had a special project and he needed them. And when he was done, he gave them to me. And and uh, of course I've hung on to them forever and used them for things like this. There we go. All right, that should come down, boom. And I think we can get by with a uh, quarter inch drill bit right here again for our pilot on all of these. That's what I'm gonna do. And we're gonna give it a little bit of speed here. Actually, I think we can run it, run it at that speed. That is ever so slightly just underneath that eighth inch wall with the quarter inch drill. It's just barely touching it. Okay, we're going to go through all the rest of them here and get them to this point. Okay, who wants to take the shortcut? <laughs> uh... Well, we'll see. Okay, I happen to have a 7 8 R8 collet right here. And a 7 8 two fluid end mill. It was dull on the end, so I went into the other room and I kind of dressed it up on my grinder to give um, a cutting edge on there. It is still 7 8 It would be ideal because that radius sweep right in here is 7 8 of an inch. So let's, let's give this a try. And we're choking it up as short as we can. And we're going to raise the table up. Okay, that's pretty close right there. We're tight. We're, we're 0, 0, 1, 7, 7, 6, our number. And we're gonna get down here on the speed. I think we might be able to go a little faster than that. All right. Now the only reason why I'm uh, I'm doing it this way here is one. I want to put that radius in there. I've already got the quarter inch So I don't have to worry about the center of this end mill cutting and we have a little bit of material on this outside right here uh, Which is gonna give us some vertical contact all the way down through there So it's either open it up and have a half a hole halfway through there come in with an end mill come in and grind from the outside Which we might end up doing that as well and then coming back to this but I want to give it a, a shot um see how it does and we're going to bring this down and there is zero we're going to just set our dial at zero so we know where we're at when we go to touch there and uh we're going to engage our our feed lever so that we got control of the spindle and it's not going to want to like suck down in there grab the part throw it on the floor or throw it out or rip or break or blah, blah, blah. so we'll we'll just see how it goes all right all right, I think you're close enough there. And for some reason, I think I'm gonna have my oil on this side here. I am gonna put some cutting oil on here. And here we go.
You know, I think I actually might be able to put this on auto feed. So I'm going to hold off for a minute here. All right, uh, you ready for a shortcut? All right, we got the 7 8 uh, end mill in here. And we touched off. That's our zero mark there. All right, and we went ahead and engaged our auto feed for the spindle here. And I think we got a pretty comfortable speed right there. And come down and touch off. I'm still zero zero checking my locks here. Okay, that looks good. Let's give it a little bit of oil. All right, let's engage it. Slight tension on my brake on the spindle here. There she goes. She picked up on the feed. Okay, now she's just cutting the very top web. I'll see about getting you in about this angle here. She's at the bottom surface now. There we go. All right, and this is what it looks like once we pull it out. Nice clean radius, nice and uniform. We don't have to get in there and touch that at all. Everything is on the outside radius now instead of in the convex. The convex is just taking care of all with that one plunge cut. And we're able to do it because it was a a quarter inch drill to start it out and not be center cutting on that end mill and just slow enough feed makes it count. It's a slow process but you know it, that gives you the finished product right there. Alright we finished doing this radius that we need down in the bottom here and we took it into the belt sander and we kind of went once around so that we're all smooth all the way around. And we marked our same end here we went ahead and re-verified being center in the vise we can come up to the stop here and we have a turbo end mill in here now this is just a generic this isn't a Niagara or anything special there it's just just uh, probably a Chinese one but uh, it, it's it's 
going to do the job. I've been doing some cutting with it before. Um, just about anything will cut just regular coal roll. And uh, just hope it don't make me a liar now. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is really going to be a 916 slot on here. And uh, the slot is 2 inches 937 long. We just uh, put that in half, which is going to be 1 inch 469 out from that center point. And uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and we're going to lock our table up, or knee in and out. The table, we're just going to kind of put it like that. And uh, we're going to bring you in. Let me turn this on. Um, just a tad bit fast. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and slow it down. All right, right in there. Okay. Let's bring you in. All right. I don't know if I'm going to need any uh, cutting oil or anything else. All right. Vice is tight. Okay. We're going to head off in this direction first towards you. One inch, 100, 200, that's 300. That's what turbo end mills are so nice is because they, you can, you can really hook along pretty good. Okay, uh, 469 right there. All right, and coming on back. You know why you cut on the way back from the end mill? Because the force of cutting has pulled, the, it, it tool flexes off of one side. And then when you're coming back, of course, it's relaxed uh, from the the amount that you were it was it was pulling itself over with the cut in the direction you were going. And when you come back, it, re it relieves that pressure, so you end up cutting on the back side that you don't know you, you didn't cut on the direction there. That's why it's important to go ahead and plunge cut an end mill or an end mill cut should be plunged to the bottom and done in one stroke otherwise you're going to have lines up and down your bore or your uh, slot that you're cutting okay four there we go okay now we're going to go ahead and do the other five bring it up to this point here and then we're going to switch out and we'll put in a 9 16 end mill because this this groove is really 9 16 wide all right we uh we found our 9 16 end mill i'm going to come on down here you know kind of work in that that mid-range right there all right we slowed it down some i hope it's enough and we're locked down we're gonna we're gonna feed this a little bit by hand we are going to put a little bit of oil on this here just because this is just a high speed end mill. It's nothing fancy on it. If I had a 916 turbo end mill, I would just cut it with that. Okay, we're at 400. It's taking a full load right now. I'm just kind of babying it because I don't want it to pull to one side so much. All right, and there's 68, 69. Okay, coming back. Just barely cutting on that one back side. Okay, here we go on this side here now.
four, 30, 40, 50, 60, 6, 8, 9. Okay, coming back. All right, <clears throat> let me shut it off. Grab the vacuum. And basically that's clearance for the bearing okay and I the bearings should have side play on them shouldn't be real real tight in there you don't want no binding at all all right we're going to continue through the rest let me blow that off All right, now we just need the radius across both of these, which will let the roller stick out beyond that outside surface all the way. And we'll have holes put in for rosette welding the blocks into the end of this carrier. We're almost done. All right, let me power through the rest of these. Okay, we're going back into the quarter inch bit drilling mode and we got five holes to put in on the one inch side so each of these ends here will get a uh, hole and right in the center of the bottom of this i'm putting a quarter inch hole and i'll explain to you when i get done with the project and assembling these what that quarter inch hole is for and i did leave it out on the drawings All right, let's speed this up. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna go through and we're gonna do this to all of them and then we'll go to the end one there and set that up. Okay, we're going back into the quarter inch bit drilling mode and we got five holes to put in on the one inch side. So each of these ends here will get a uh, hole and right in the center of the bottom of this, I'm putting a quarter inch hole. And I'll explain to you when I get done with the project and assembling these, what that quarter inch hole is for. And I did leave it out on the drawings. All right, let's speed this up. There we go. Okay, now we're going to go through and we're going to do this to all of them and then we'll go to the end one there and set that up. Now we're going out here and these are going to be rosette weld holes at the end out here. And we're going to be able to do this all in one setup because we're only wanting the accuracy of being able to weld through these holes. So with this in a one inch, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drill, 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 drill. All right, now what we're welding to is actually that block is going to be slid into the tube and it's going to be somewhere halfway in there and it's actually two and five eighths from center is uh, where we're going to drill the hole three eighths in from the end. We'll drill the bottoms here first.
All right, that's five holes in each. We're gonna continue on through the rest of them. Okay, we rolled it over on the side here. And now we're putting the four in on the two inch side of the box tube here. I could just push it straight on through and get uh, two of them at a time. But uh, we got to clean out the inside bore with a little rotary burr. This way here it pushes, pushes the uh, chip on the inside. It doesn't take me that long to flip it over. And it saves me from one, one burr on the outside. Okay, we'll finish drilling all of these and then uh, I'm going to show you how we're going to hand massage this angle in or this radius in on that outside curve there.